resides for 15 years. He resides for 15 years. Um, my clients uh, range from LA Times, LA Times Magazine, where I do print and web for them, uh, design and develop websites for them. I uh, do a work on admin.com, uh, remax.com, redevelopment, um, LA Times, obviously, uh, and numerous uh, small projects. I'm um, Matthew Lawson, uh, a web designer, graphic designer. Uh, I've been working with WordPress since version 264. Um, and I've had a bunch of great experiences with it. I started using WordPress to uh, just allow my clients to update websites easily so they don't bother me. Uh, <laughs> um, I graduated from uh, Rochester State of Technology with a uh, Bachelor's in Applied Arts and Sciences. Uh, hi, I'm Marty Cornley. Um, I actually have a degree as a filmmaker and got into press and web design as a way to complete uh, my own film website. I just kind of taught myself everything as I went. Um, a couple years ago, discovered WordPress and got into that. Um, always had a bit of a program in me, so I'm a little bit more towards that end. I've been developing uh, plugins recently. Um, with uh, SEO image gallery that does like some JavaScript and stuff instead of a flash gallery. Um, basically all self-taught. I do mostly as far as design goes, I do mostly custom blogs, um, all the photography and that kind of thing. You have to use IE though. <laughs> <laughs> IEC. 
seeks it. So let's find out how good the designer you really are. <laughs>
actually a really good friend of mine. She was on the second season of American Idol. Remember that? Um, she signed a Vanguard Records. They did her official site. Um, this is just a selection of some projects that I've done. Um, I've worked with Tim Caldwell, like Justin Guarini, who's another person from American Idol. I did his website. Um, Hannah Lush Davis is a music video director. Harvey Mason is a big jazz drummer. Um, I don't know, I mean, all, all of, most everything, except for these couple like MySpaces, um, is, is built in WordPress. If there's anything anyone wants me to pull up, I can do it. Um, or you can just check it out. What? Can you pull up a lead generation site for the mm -hmm. software? Like the what? Like Thank the shirt one from the top of the top? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this, one, this one actually uh, launched yesterday. It's still, uh, it's, yeah, it's still being, being tweaked and uh, we're adding more uh, social network sharing abilities. Um, I wish I could show you their old website because it's quite possibly the ugliest thing that I've ever seen in my life. So I really could only go up to the Yeah, and then it, it's actually, I don't know if anybody knows what car brokers do because I didn't. And they don't charge you a fee, and they find you a car like in your budget, and they deal with the salesman and all this stuff. I don't know why in the world I haven't used them before, but um, yeah, I, I mean they that's can. What do, yeah, that's what that's what these people do. Huh? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm not a copywriter. They need they need somebody like you. I just I plug it in and I try to make it look pretty. Um, um, but yeah, there's a bunch of. Uh, yeah, this is all WordPress. They have control over everything. They can get in and enter in new testimonials. They can control all the text. Um, How do you handle the testimonials? Um, like posts, their category of posts. Any repetitive content. I mean, I think what helps when you're designing for WordPress is if you understand how WordPress works. Um, because you can look for you know repetitive content and you can use that for posts. Like I've used the post format for everything from a video gallery, and that's how people add new videos. Um, you know, you can use posts for, I mean, any, like testimonials. You can use posts for, like, on this, um, on the main page, down here at the bottom, these feature cards, this, these are posts. And then, like, uh, let's see if the will, I'm actually kind of scared to put this on my <laughs>
Um, this is 100% WordPress. It took them from, they had a static site. It looked somewhat like this, but they couldn't update it. They updated maybe once every two months, and they had to call their, their programmer or the business site before. Um, it was all of the old HTML with like tables and stuff like that. Um, so everything now is in WordPress. This little slider panel here is um, JavaScript, but these are just theme options in the back. So I did some custom like ability to upload an image and the link and that kind of thing. Um, and then you use some jQuery to uh, animate it. Is that my text? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I try to do that as much as possible. Unless it needs to be an image, I'll try to get that for like search engines and readability and all that. Um, anytime I can, I'll do it in real text. Um, I think just part of the answer. Is there a font family that you prefer to use when you're using text? Personally, I like the sans serif stuff, and I'll use Century Gothic. It's like one of the cleaner ones that actually seems to work. But yeah, again, I'm not like, I'm actually more towards the programming end, so I'm not a crazy font person or color person, but you know, personally, I like the, the Century Gothic kind of look. Um, Quick question. Can questions, like, if, if you ask, I'd love to know from everybody, like, a question about the plugins, just from, from everybody, questions like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's your top five plugins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of, the, some of the obvious ones, I use, like, the all-in-one SEO pack on pretty much every site, the Google Site Maps. Um, those, to me, are almost just, like, built in. I just install them every time. Um, and like as far as being able to build a site, I need the reveal IDs for admin. Um, I don't know why they got rid of showing the IDs for posts and that kind of thing, but I do that all the time. Um, as far as usability, I like the uh, the shadow box JS that pops the image up in a little overlay. That works pretty good. Um, anyway, uh, pretty much the same stuff. I like the custom fields, flutter, <coughs> magic fields. It's really awesome. Um, also like next gen, next gen uh, gallery. It's pretty cool. Image and video. Uh, pods definitely. Um, magic fields. Uh, Google site maps. I use all the time. All the ways to go. Um, lately, it's been with all the hacking going on with the new uh, it's been like security installation stuff that lets you know if there's any changes to your files, which is really great. Um, you know, the lockdown, login lockdown. Uh, which one is that? Oh, which one? Is there a plugin for it? I can't think of which one I have about three of them now. One that tells me that any changes are on the server. Um, and then there's one that uh, pretty much tells you uh, what problems are with your site if you have it. WP admin doesn't have any HD access uh, security on it, or you know this needs to be uh, in the mode of you know 750 or 75. Um, do you think those three? Do you know those three? I am not in front of the computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I, I, hit, I hit the codex about yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 times a day. Yeah. Um, I'm googling. Um, I, I like to say, okay, to Google. <laughs> you know, you're doing lots of research, you need to do something, you're going to go look it up, but, um... Uh, Magic Fields, uh, like it's been mentioned, I like to resize on upload just to kind of protect myself from clients that try to upload giant pictures that are ridiculously large, and so it shrinks them when they upload so then they don't have to do it later. Are you all? Are you all? Are you all? Because you have your media settings. I know, but what, what it does is it will resize like the largest size of the image. Yeah. I think you can customize it to where it doesn't. Like you can tweak it, but it's just something. Yeah, I actually, um, since I do a lot of development and you're like, you're in that process of like testing something, and then maybe they had a gallery in New York and they're working with on their website, and they uploaded huge files. They're like eight megabytes each, and I was like, awesome. Uh, so let's do this again. Um, but within. You know, all your thumbnails, everything's created in a certain way. Where you decided, oh, I'm going to change the, the size of my thumbnails now. I want to change the design. It's a great plugin uh, that will regenerate your thumbnails. And it'll, I think it's called Regenerate. Just type that in there into the plugin. Uh, and it, it goes through every single upload you have, and it recreates all of those thumbnails, small or medium and large files that you know WordPress creates for you automatically on the fly. Um, and if you have a thousand images and they're eight megabytes each, so that will take an hour, so you just let it do it overnight. Uh, but uh, it's really a great tool. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you 
I do. You have font question? What's your, your font that you like to use most favorite line? Out of the four fonts that you can use. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, probably with the, what Marty was saying, like I like uh, Helvetica. Sometimes I'll throw like Helvetica new just in case I have it installed on the computer. Um, yeah, it's usually Helvetica new, Helvetica, Arial Sands. Uh, I'm actually really partial to the Georgia right now um, for a readable. Uh, I like it better than Times of Roman. It has really nice, beautiful. You said Georgia? Georgia, yes. It has really beautiful uh, numbers. Uh, no, seriously, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a typographer, so I really love like fonts. And, and I do a lot of coupon, too. Are you familiar with coupon? Mm -hmm. Coupon allows you to upload a font and then convert it to JavaScript, which ends up writing it to Canvas element. So essentially, in the behind the scenes, using JavaScript, it's very nice to get that JavaScript or Google comes and checks your site out, and it converts to whatever font you want. I've been using uh, that font face a font lot recently, which I like. Uh, you can find a lot of font squirrel. Yeah, you know, they have like, you can just download a kit that tells you how to do a font, font squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they have like, uh, kind of kits ready to go, like ready to upload. And then it's just all CSS, and you can actually select the text and everything instead of like the image, which you want to put it. They both do different things. Just do it. Well, it's not JavaScript. Another plugin that I forgot to mention um, that I really like is custom images. Um, they're really great for branding. It looks like it breaks when you install it, like because for some reason their built in files aren't there, but if you upload your own images, you can like change the header file and refresh or change the login screen. Um, you know, Custom admin branding. Custom branding. I don't know if it's a plugin that makes it possible. That's custom. Custom admin typing. Oh, that's a human theory. Human interaction, yeah. But you should create a plugin for that. I should. I should sign off. What's a plugin that will allow you to have an image and then be able to bring it closer? What I would say is to start, if you want to find something, say, I have this idea, let me go see if it's a plugin, go to WordPress to the extend, and type in keywords, just like Googling, what you think you try to find. I think if you search for, like, it's, I mean, it's, it's jQuery, it's like jQuery Zoom, if you search for that, jQuery, like the letter J and then the word query. If it's a few. And then Zoom. I think that you'll probably find something. You can even try Google. Just WordPress, Zoom, plugin. Yeah. Google, you can solve 90% of my problems by searching. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. Someone just said what's this instant? Google instant they just launched? Yeah. I don't have to hit enter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Google Instant Search Console. Yeah. 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 we're going to call 
to get that result. So we want the uh, navigation or we want the page result. It's going to be in a list element form or it's going to be in this form or we're going to know we're going to pass this in array and how, do we, how is it going to be a current item or whatnot. So I think you do some static and then you integrate and you integrate it and then you kind of go and fuss with the CSS <coughs> to make sure, oh I forgot, it's not called active, it's called current page item or current page ancestor and you have to like add a little bit extra to the CSS um, to fine tune. So it's kind of like, it's a merging of both to, to make sure it's good. I mean, I use the same process when I'm actually going to recode the theme. Um, I don't do it all in one piece and then go into WordPress. I actually, I have uh, my own theme that I start off with, like the same base theme. It's kind of a, a revised version of the starters, which is a pretty um, blank theme, but I was doing the same things to it, so eventually it became the Kristen start theme. Um, so I use that every time. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I ended up doing the same thing. I was I was taking things out of like two bricks at one point so many times that I just I emptied everything out and yeah. wanted to start again. Yeah. Right. Um, a question that may be a little basic and broad, but I heard, um, but that is, can you just talk for a second about post pages categories and how you're using what the difference is, how we should, like how to make the best use of those for it's a great question because we always think about that. And we're, how am I going to do this? Right. Um, I mean, when, when I'm building out a site or designing a site, I always think of posts when it comes to repetitive content. Um, like I said, I've used it for everything from you know videos for a video gallery, um, you know, like the featured cards on that one page, or you know, just general posts on a blog. If it I feel like instead of you know running through like one page of the same content like repeated, it's just easier if they're doing it one at a time. And there's a lot of plugins out there that you can actually um, post mash filter. You can um, post mash filter. Um, you can change the order of posts in a category into a custom order, so it doesn't have to be by date or whatever. You can also do that in the code, but it's so you don't have to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like these are, these are all posts. 
just posts. Right. It was just a blogging platform. And then they said, you know what? Let's introduce a stat more static version, a page. So posts are different than pages because pages can have parent pages and child pages. So I can say um, one thing is a parent and this is a child. You know. So and they're more static about us or about our company. And then underneath they're about us, location. So it's not really something you're going to be blogging about. But then categories are um, news. Um, events, um, sports, you know, those type of things. Now to throw another curveball into this, we have tags. You've heard of tags? So you can tag things too. A tag is like creating a category on the fly that you don't really want to be a category. But you want to be able to cross-reference this. So like, you know, if you had things about sports, you'd have a category called sports, and you'd put something about the Dodgers in that sports. You have a post about the Dodgers. But in that, you would say, I talked about Ethier, and I talked about Dodger Blue. And other posts that have Ethier in it, you can cross reference. So when someone clicks on Ethier, they'll see every post that you tag with Ethier. But when you click on the category sports, you'll see stuff about the Dodgers, stuff about the Angels. And, so, and similar on, on here, you see I have two categories up that show up on the front page. So there's a news category, and it's the most recent one from there, and then the voices category, and it's the most recent one from there. Um, so you can throw them around different places in the site by telling, you know, show this category. Okay, last thing that's important. So the category can look like in your navigation bar, can look like page. And that's it. It's a menu. Especially, especially now with WordPress 3 as a great menu. Have you guys played with the menu? Uh, yes. 2010? It is unbelievable. I've always I've hard coded a lot of this stuff because I had pages and I needed an order, but it wouldn't let me. And, uh, and now with WordPress uh, Nav, WP Nav menu, uh, it allows you to do whatever and have sub pages and child pages and, and external links and internal links that aren't really pages or anything. It's really great. Okay. Yeah. Great for the client because they don't have to worry about the page order number. Yeah. You know, exactly. they can just drag stuff around. Beautiful. If you're, uh, along those lines, when you're trying to figure out a sorting scheme for the data that you might propose or how do you decide between categories, tags, fields, impact on me, and the you decide? Well, how, how, what, what are the trends? And, um, well, the category is something that I should have a story in your post or your data. Uh, I mean, like, you, can, you can honestly take advantage of, of almost all those. As far as like the, the fields are concerned, it's going to be getting a basic idea of what kind of post Someone's going to be putting, I did a, like a custom, a bunch of custom posts for horoscopes that will come on. So the categories were all, um, you know, obviously the different signs. And then I had custom fields like, uh, you know, the newspaper out says, oh, you're having a three-star day or something like that. So I created a custom post where you could choose one to five stars or something like that. So depending on what the post is about and what the future post will be about, um, that's how you're basically going to have to like, sort of decide what a custom field to <coughs> well, this is the categories and the tags are all taxonomy. And, and I saw stuff in the codex about the new taxonomy features of Rio. I don't understand what the difference between that is and the previous. It just means that you can have something that's not a category, it's not a tag, but it's publications or it's whatever you want to create it, so it really opens it up to the hard code what it is now, to whatever you want it to be. I think it's, uh, I don't know if you guys know, that Justin Tadlock I think has a great example of like, he has a, a sample movie database that he right. set up and, uh, you know, he set up custom categories that were actor and director and that kind of thing, and so that's an example, instead of just category, you can group things by a lot of other types of categories, I, which make other groups. I felt that that was a little lackluster, and it didn't really benefit me much. So like Magic Fields, I've been using that a lot. And I was like, OK, so this is going to solve all my problems. It's going to be the new Magic Fields. But it's not that at all. And if you've done any PHP templating, uh, you can either do a, do a WP query and get all posts or get all pages. What the new taxonomy is also saying, the new custom post type is saying, I have a new movie. 
So it's actually not called post or page, but it's called movie uh, or something else. So it's a different, it's not a post, it's not a page, it's a movie type. So it's a little different, but um, Magic Fields doesn't, they treat them all like either pages or posts still. But you, custom post types, that's all it does is say, I'm not a post or page, I'm something else. And I can, it, yeah, right? And, and, but it doesn't do what Magic Fields does yet. I wish it did. Because then someone asked me about how, up there, is about how, what happens when Magic Fields goes away and um, it's, my whole website's going to crash. Uh, that's, that's what I got from it. But I understand, so like, that's, I have to think about that sometimes. And if it did go away, it was just built into WordPress, I'd be happy. And what about building a glossary? Is there a plugin for that? Or is it like, if, yeah, yeah, in other words, if you're writing a blog, you want to WP <laughs> Tag Cloud has the glossary, and it shows you all of the tags that are uh, that are, are in your site. Yeah, um, actually, I have a question. I have a comment about earlier trying to bring PSDs and the WordPress to your layouts and stuff. I just wanted to mention the fact that uh, Adobe Fireworks actually is a much better tool for creating web page layouts because you can slice the whole you slice the graphic statements, the GIFs, the and your JPEG, and also the great feature called pages. So, for example, you're talking about a client, a, a, a site for a client of five modifications, you can say, okay, oh, this is a big page, and make a change into this big page, do it again, and so you don't have to go through create five PSDs, you have one PNG file, and it's all that your pages in there, you just send it up to the client so you, he or she likes it. The question I have is actually, it's made for Chris because you uh, do a lot of music sites that I do, is um, e-commerce plugins. Have you uh, worked on e-commerce plugins yes. that you recommend that you know, support downloads and things like that for music um, Well, the e-commerce plugin that I, that I use the most is Shop. It's a premium plugin. Right. But um, I I mean, I haven't, had as many, I haven't found it to be as buggy mm -hmm. as some of the other ones. Um, there's still some inherent issues that hopefully, I mean, I think they actually just came out with a new version. Um, so they may have, yeah, shop, shop with two keys. Yeah. Um, but I really like that one a lot. But a lot of times I try, I mean, it kind of depends on the situation um, because there's a lot of things, like when you get into e-commerce, I always have to have a big talk with any client that wants to go down that road because some people are just so blissfully unaware of everything that goes into that. Like they just want to store and they don't know that that means that they have to get, you know, they have to make sure that they're, they have an SSL and they have to have like a payment gateway and they have to have, you know, like all this stuff. It's not just like I make the pages and it, you can take credit cards now. <laughs> 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 Um, I mean, I've, I've had people use different things. I've, had, I've, I've run into a few people now that are using um, eJunkie to, to do, it's called e-junkie.com. It's like, uh, they they handle, they like post your files and they handle the delivery and um, that kind of thing. So I've run into people using that. I mean, what I do is kind of dictated by a lot of times they already have, they either already have services that they use or they have services that they want to use. So it's kind of, you know, what I do is kind of dictated by what they want. You, you brought up another point, and um, I, really, I don't think we touched on this yet, but what do we design in? Right. You're saying fireworks, and then you talked about Photoshop, and um, uh, I, I, I used Photoshop for eight hours a day for about five years, and then I used Illustrator for, five, for eight hours a day for another five years, now I'm in InDesign. Um, and I design all my websites in InDesign. Um, Have you seen the uh, InDesign, the wire magazine through InDesign? For yeah, but actually, yeah. I'm working with that though, it has magazine right now. Ah. But, uh, why do I use InDesign versus Photoshop? Photoshop is bloated and it's for editing photographs. That's what it's for. Uh, you can do slices and do, use that to do that. But when you have to make it, when you need to make a client change to a design, you need to edit 12 templates, that's going to take you three hours. Um, however, in InDesign, you have master pages, you have templates, you have margins, you have grids, you have character styles, you have paragraph styles, you can place images, you can export JPEGs and PDFs like that to a client, so it's really easy to get in and out. And then ultimately, when you have to build it, then you go to Photoshop, and you build your main home page thing and any interior pages, and then you can go from there. Um, I do uh, Illustrator, uh, and I really like it, but I didn't even think that would be a good design. Um, get away from Illustrator, it's so hard to use. Um, I swear, if you can slice in it, 
but whenever a client gives me an Illustrator file to work from, it takes me four times as long. And if that's four hours that you could be, you know, go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Um, so it's going to be a lot easier for everybody. But I know that there's a WordPress plugin that will allow you to use, is it list, or what is this, uh, the pay site. You pay for a license, you can uh, use what it's on. Type it. Type it. And you can go in and download this plugin and then put your code yeah. in. And then you'd be able to use that. And, and not only that, but it, it takes the font, the, the entire library for the font. And you can say, well, I'm not ever going to use italics, so you drive italics. Yeah. I'm not even pull that on regular and you can streamline it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's about 50 bucks annually. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
how quick the turnaround time you can you can basically have uh, in just getting a site like up and live. Uh, and then the other thing that you, know, you were sort of talking about is sort of showing your clients how to uh, update or how to basically post into uh, their WordPress. And as you can see, my buddy uh, ignores the more tag that I was talking about, <laughs> so it shows all the content. But uh, again, like I'm sort of creating like uh, all these videos for um, basically about like you know updating the WordPress, like all the little things, like you know all the special galleries, custom fields, and all that, and sort of creating like a resource because. Again, like I use a lot of the a lot of the same plugins, so a lot of the functionality of you know all my sites are pretty much the same, and all these videos can cover them. Uh, right now, a few of them are on YouTube private. I'm actually sort of getting them together and creating another WordPress website, all about updating WordPress websites. So. What's your website? What's your portfolio site? Uh, it is this one that I haven't updated in a hot minute. <laughs> Is that, is that me? Is that yeah. 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 Sweet. Look at that banner. So again, I mean, you know, WordPress is, is awesome. Like right here, just sort of wanted to show off some of the, the screenshots and stuff that we're doing. Um, and then give you the option to uh, pop this bad boy open. And it's probably, is he going to bark? No, not bad. All right. Cool. But uh, yeah, just WordPress is awesome. Just such a quick turnaround time. And then again, like using your resources, like plugins and, and themes that are available, and modifying them to uh, to meet the needs of your client or of your website. Uh, maybe you can. Uh, <laughs> you ever use uh, other uh, RSS feeds?